After going through the whole Broly saga and how our mighty warriors stumbled upon him, Goku and Broly find themselves in a hilariously intense training session on Beerus's planet. But uh-oh, Broly's inner Hulk starts to emerge, and Goku, with his panic mode activated, desperately implores him to chill before he wrecks everything in sight. Meanwhile, Vegeta, our resident Zen master, sits cross-legged, enlightening Goku about the wonders of meditation. He enlightens Goku that their bodies are already swole to the max, putting them on par with the likes of Jiren, Broly, Moro, Gas, and even Frieza. So instead of pumping iron, Vegeta is all about pumping his brain muscles. In the midst of this chaos, Whis, our friendly celestial cheerleader, high-fives Vegeta for being the brainiac of the bunch and suggests a friendly Scion showdown involving the power trio. But hold up, Vegeta ain't down if Broly's involved, fearing the inevitable chaos that'll ensue. Meanwhile, Beerus, the perpetually napping cat god, finally awakens from his eternal siesta, only to discover that Lemo, Chilai, and Broly have set up camp on his turf. Goku, being the smooth talker he is, justifies their presence by claiming it's the safest place to hide Broly from Frieza. And guess what? Beerus, being a connoisseur of good food and eye-catching beauty, decides to let them crash for a while. Lemo, the culinary maestro, cooks up a feast fit for Saiyan champions, while the rest indulge in ice cream like true warriors. And in the midst of all this, Broly, with popcorn in hand, gets front row seats to the Goku and Vegeta comedy show. Meanwhile, on good old Earth, Piccolo decides to level up his game and pays a visit to Dende, the Green Guru's successor, for some power unlocking. Unfortunately, Dende's like, Sorry, buddy, you're out of luck. I'm too young for that gig. But fear not, there's a plan B, those shiny, upgraded Dragon Balls. Piccolo, with a twinge of doubt, wonders if he can gather all the mystical balls in time, but Dende drops the bombshell that Bulma's probably beaten him to it. Off he goes, Red Ribbon style, to Capsule Corporation where Bulma and her wish-granting dragon balls await. With the first wish in his grasp, Piccolo cunningly asks Shenron to unlock his hidden potential, throwing in a little bonus favor for good measure. But wait, Bulma's got two wishes left, and she goes all out on cosmetic makeovers, only to realize with a facepalm that they could have used a wish to bring Goku and Vegeta back to Earth. Piccolo, quick to dish out some finger-wagging, gets served right back when Bulma reminds him that he didn't think of it either. Sheepishly, he retreats to Red Ribbon HQ, leaving behind the impending sense of excitement that even Trunks and Goten can't ignore. Something big is about to go down, and they know it. Meanwhile, in the top-secret villain hideout, Magenta and Carmine, the evildoer duo, cook up a devious plan to lure Gohan out of hiding. They hatch a brilliant scheme to kidnap his beloved daughter Pan, because what better way to bait a superhero dad than threatening his little bundle of joy? But hold your horses, folks, because Piccolo still rocking that iconic red ribbon outfit, steps up to the plate, claiming to know Pan like the back of his green hand. Teaming up with Soldier Hash 15, they embark on a mission that's equal parts risky and ridiculous. Piccolo's got a sneaky feeling that staging this abduction might just be the ticket to awaken Gohan's dormant fighting spirit. The stage is set for some Saiyan family drama, and we're all eagerly awaiting the next episode of Gohan's fatherly fury.